Mo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, over the last few months, I've done a few woodworking projects that involves my DeWalt portable table saw. And if my regular viewers know that when I use that saw, I just set it up here on my welding table or I set it on my workbench over here, and that's where I use to do the cuts that I do. But because it's a portable table saw, it's only two foot, it has a two foot by two foot table, and it's really not big enough to run anything big through there. But uh, that's what I've had to work with for the last few years. But thanks to a couple of viewers in the comment section suggested that I build a table for my table saw, and I thought that's a great idea. They had referred to Ron Polk's uh, work table. I went online and checked that out. He's got an amazing system uh, that would work great for contractors that would want to load this into their truck or van and take it to the job site and set it up. That's a great system he's got there. It really looks good. But it doesn't quite work for me since I have my shop right here and I don't plan on moving it uh, at, in or out of the shop other than, at, other than inside the shop right here. So what I've elected to do is find a location and build a small little table that would adapt to my little table saw that would work for me. And I think I found that location. Right here on my work uh, bench, before I had my welding table, I had a little extension that I screwed on to the outside right here with a couple of legs and it allowed this to be roughly four feet wide by eight feet long and allow me to put a full four by eight sheet of plywood on here and made for a much larger workspace. But since I have my welding table now, I have not used that. And so this is a good location, I think, to build a table that would just adapt to here and I'd have a workstation right here and provide a big work area for this. So as you guys know, I don't have, I don't work off of plans. Everything I do is build as I go. And that's what I plan on doing on this project right here. So with that said, let's get started. Show you guys this is what I was talking about about the extension of my work table and I use this for years by the way and it worked out really good and as you can see it's nice and tucked away and it's out of the way of anything you know space is always an issue here first of all I got these legs I got these legs I mean there's nothing simple it's just a couple of two by fours and I set those right here and I have a cleat across the top right here that's three quarters of an inch down um, from the top of my surface of my workbench. And that's where the extension lies in. And here's the extension right here on the side, out of the way. Basically, just pick this thing up, set it up here. And now you grab these legs right here, put them right here. And just like that, oh yeah, well, put a couple screws in here and that's all you really need to hold in place and a few screws in here. And as you can see, the wood legs, they're kind of shot because I've drilled so many times in there and the holes get stripped out. But for as much as I used it, this thing worked out perfectly. And there you go, nice big table, easy to put up, easy to take down, but I'm not using this anymore. This is the perfect spot for the new table saw table. All right, we're getting started here, and all I'm using here is some uh, three-quarter inch uh, Chinese birch plywood that I picked up at my local lumber supply store. You know, this stuff here is about $10 cheaper than, uh, than the normal plywood, but you know what? It's not absolutely perfect, but it's good enough for what uh, I'll be using it for here. And as you can see, I'm just uh, cutting things out with my... Uh, Hilti cordless uh, skill saw and how handy would this uh, table saw table be right now when I'm having to do all these cuts and stuff but uh, you know we're figuring things out right here this right here you see me cutting out this is for the slot that I'm going to need um, for the uh, fence on my table saw it uh, runs on a track and so in order for that to to move back and forth I'm having to, to cut this uh, slot out right here and and, uh, you know, it worked out uh, pretty good, I'm thinking. Like I said, everything I do, I build as I go right here. And, 
and uh, you know thinking about how things should work um, so far we're not having any problems and uh, uh, that's starting to take shape there it is just finishing up the edges here with uh, my DeWalt uh, jigsaw just sharpening up the edges after I drilled them out with that uh, that drill there and moving on to step two and just cutting out the, the what would be the sides and you can see I'm, I'm using that uh, that long straight edge you know I bought it I bought a I got it at Harbor Freight I got a, a four footer and a two footer and it was like 14 bucks or something for both of them uh, I can't remember what it was some st stupid cheap like that and uh, you know for as much as I've used those things eh, they I gotta say they work pretty good uh, you know for cutting uh, you know long straight edges works pretty good Here's the uh, table saws sitting up on top of the wood that I'm making the table saw table for. And if you see the uh, see that pipe fitting in the bottom of my saw right there, it's a, I think it's a two inch uh, pipe fitting. And, and that at one time I had a four foot piece of pipe that came off there and went into a trash can for some sort of dust control. But, uh, you know, I've got a better plan for it this time around. You can see it's starting to take shape right here. I'm getting the sides. Uh, you know, cut out and figured out, and right now we're going to go for uh, some supports for the back. And once again, you guys can see I, I use my, you know, my welding table or right behind me where the table saw is now, my workbench. But for the most part, the, tables, uh, the welding table gets most of the use. It's kind of uh, got a lot of room. I've got some space in the, in the middle of my shop here for that. Those little plastic clamps you see me use right there, those things are really handy. The little spring clamps, uh, you know, you can get them. I, I think I got those Craftsman. You can see it's Craftsman red, but they're they're like five bucks or something. But, you know, they're really handy. They work really good. That's straight edge again. You know, we go cutting all these small pieces out, you know, where I could be using that uh, table saw to do all this. But uh, soon enough, it's going to be happening. You know, it'll be, it'll be just about the right time that I get this thing built and I won't have another wood project for a long time, but oh well, it is what it is. You know, when I was purchasing the wood for this, um, I don't know what I was thinking. I got a sheet of plywood and then I also got some poplar. I guess I was thinking I was going to make the frame um, out, of, out of plywood and then maybe have a, an edge all the way around with poplar and I don't know. Yeah, I could have made the whole thing out of plywood, but uh, anyways, I've got it, so I'm using it. And uh, when it's all together, uh, you'll see it really doesn't really even matter. This long table, um, you guys might remember from the bench video, uh, I had to cut those uh, two inch wide by four foot long oak uh, slats for the table. And so I made this uh, extension uh, feed table, I guess it's called, uh, for the table saw to, to run those long boards through. I made it for just that particular project. And that's just another reason why I'm making this table right here. So uh, I'll be able to do away with that thing. It just takes up more space that I don't really have in my shop. You know, again, just a lot of a lot of thinking went into this, uh, you know, trying to figure things out and, you know, trying to always be a step ahead of the game. And and uh, I, I got to say, I, I really didn't make any mistakes on this. Uh, this thing uh, went together just as I was hoping it would go together. And you can see I'm finally starting to do some assembly here. You know, there's the poplar sides that I don't know, I thought I was going to get real fancy with, but uh, could have ended up being, being plywood. But, oh, well, all good. And you can see that uh, um, I'm gluing and brad nailing things together at first to kind of get things uh, held into position right here. You know that I'm, I'm using tight bond glue and uh, I don't know, there's a couple of different, there's a green bottle, I think that one's called Ultimate, and then there's a blue bottle, I think it's called Original, and, and I haven't taken the time to really figure out what the difference is. Um, I see a lot of people out there using, just about everybody uses tight bond, but uh, um, Anyways, it's just what they happen to have. And you can see right here, I'm starting to screw things together. And, and I got to say, I probably went way overboard in the screw department. Uh, I'm probably going to get blasted on the comment section about, uh, geez, Jimbo, why are you going to put so many screws in there? Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do at the time. So not only is this thing, uh, you know, glued and nailed it's screwed together it's not going to be going anywhere 
Look at all the dust. Oof, man. Can't wait to get this dust control thing figured out. So I'm making some angle brackets for the for the back half of uh, this this table, and uh, you know th those worked out really good. I I, I really like the way they worked out, and I had a different plan for the uh, for the front of the table, and that plan eh, didn't seem to work out. So I ended up making a a couple of those angle brackets for the front of the table, as you'll see here in a minute. But, uh, I'm just kind of getting things uh, put together. There's angle brackets going in the back. Starting to take shape, starting to look like something. And there, we're just fitting the base in right now and gluing things down. And uh, man, that fit really nice and smooth right in there. And once it's got everything all squared up, I just nailed it down. And here we go. Man, screw monger. I don't know what I was thinking, but you know what? What am I going to do? I'm not going to stop now. I've got this many screws. May as well just keep the ball rolling. And all they are just, uh, they're inch and a quarter drywall screws, but they're, I don't know what they're called. They're, they're I don't want to say they're deck screws, but they're, they're, they're thicker than normal. They got a red coating on them. I don't know. It's just boxes. I, I had a couple boxes left over from a project I was doing, so I just thought it would be the perfect, uh, perfect screws to use on this one. And everything is uh, everything is, is is countersunk. You know the 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 drill that I was using has got a not only does it have a um, you know pilot drill, but it's also got a countersunk bit all in one. Drill the hole and it provides a countersink. So that worked out pretty good. And the screw is all below level. And there's the angle pieces in the very front that uh, that you see going in. That was ultimately the best choice. I'm glad I I'm glad I did that. That provided for the best look and the best support. Now, coming up here in a minute, you're going to see that I used a uh, about a two and a half inch hole saw to drill a hole in the side for the cord. And I got to tell you, um, and that's that's happening after I do my my router here. It's just a little palm router. I just run the cord rounding over a bit, run around everything, uh, and just a sanding block. And taking here, here it is, right there. I didn't get started drilling a hole straight, but man. Uh, when I did, it uh, it jumped off track and it kind of scared me a little bit, but uh, I got squared up and uh, ended up uh, working out uh, pretty good. Okay, so uh, this is what we got left with here. Uh, I got a good day in yesterday. I got this thing built from scratch. Uh, so obviously it's the next day. I got late last night, but uh, hey, I'm pretty pleased with the way this thing turned out. Um, I think it's going to work really good and we're almost complete with it. The only thing I have left to do is to put the legs on the outside here. And this is the problem that I've been having for the last 48 hours. And that is trying to figure out and analyze what a good way is to put legs on this thing. Here's a couple of options and then I'm going to tell you which one we're using because I'm tired of thinking about it. This is what I had on the table that was on here before originally that I used. Um, I just had some wooden legs and you can see that uh, these things kind of just kind of mounted on onto the table and I just put screws in here and that's what held on but you see what happens eventually these screw holes wear out then I had to add a couple more screw holes and everything is just getting loose and so this isn't really a good option here the other option is I thought I was gonna maybe go with some wooden legs since everything else is wooden and then try to get some sort of a uh, uh, a, a hinge set up on this thing so these things would actually fold up and this one would fold up but that doesn't work in order for that to happen this one would have to be up here because this one would be over here and I don't know I just don't like that idea so this is what we're going to do is I'm going to get this uh, inch and a quarter square tube right here and I'm going to fabricate a a metal piece of stock on the back side, drill some holes in it. I'm going to mount it right like this and I'm going to weld a flat plate on the top and then we're going to take these one inch square tube and we're going to be able to shove these things up in here like that and I will then uh, drill and put a pin through here and I think that's the way we're going to do it. It's uh, That way I can just pull the pin out and this stays pretty compact and uh, Everything is going to be good. That's what we're doing. So let's get this thing done. All right, so I just went to my uh, scrap metal 
section underneath my welding table there and I grabbed a couple of 316s plate that I had uh, sitting around and I decided I'm gonna make three and a half inch square plates right here so I'm just marking them out with my uh, silver pencil right here and here we go we're uh, cutting them out and there's probably lens number two right there uh, if you guys remember my last video I, I launched the lens by doing the same thing and I don't know I just got a new one and look at that I'm not even one video in and I think I may have already ruined the lens but uh, anyways I'm just trying to get some close shots in there for you guys and uh, I'm gonna get a cover for that thing I think anyways we got them all cut out and I'm just uh, with the belt sander just rounding the edges and smoothing things out and uh, here we are cutting the inch and a quarter square tube this is just gonna be the uh, sleeves for the legs and uh, I'm going to go on out and the, the inch and a quarter strap for the ends right there. And before I uh, go ahead and weld the plates on, I wanted to uh, drill the holes. Now, these are the holes that are going to accommodate the pin that's going to actually hold the legs in place. And uh, I went ahead and drilled those out. I think this would be the best time to do that rather than be a lot easier now than it would be when, when the plates are all welded on. So... Just trying to think ahead, that's all. You know, again, uh, saying thinking ahead, I'm, uh, you know, whole layout for these plates, I, I was trying to think, okay, I gotta get these things laid out right in the middle of the uh, the plywood. When I when I pre-drill it, I wanna be sure that the holes are in there as close to the center of the plywood as possible and not in the joint. So, you know, just trying to think ahead again, so. You know, went ahead and uh, got them all drilled out. And I'm just using a quarter inch drill, I think, right here. I think I'm using a number 14 screw that's going to, uh, you know, uh, hold these things on. And I think this is just a quarter inch uh, drill. And you guys check out my new chuck. Um, I got a new chuck uh, for the last five or six years. I've been dealing with the stock chuck on my drill press. And, you know, the damn thing just didn't never work the chuck key only worked in one of the holes and it was very frustrating so it was just recently i got a new chuck and everything's all good so we are just fusing the end caps on right now i thought that'd be the best way to do it and it seemed to work really good the metal is nice and clean and when the metal is nice and clean it uh, makes for a pretty good job and just using those uh strong hand um mag clamps i'm not certain the name for them but uh those things i've got several of those and it works really good took it over to the oast and just uh kind of cleaning up the welds a little bit uh these things are ultimately going to get uh painted and uh you know i kind of want them to look as uh nice as they can so while i had my tig welder out why not let's go ahead and use that to uh put these plates on um you know again I'm shaking like crazy here. May not be the prettiest of welds, but uh, you know what? Everything is good. It's gonna not gonna come apart, and uh, it worked out pretty good. And there is the finished product. And here we go. We're gonna get this thing uh, painted up. And I'm just gonna put uh, just a coat of semi gloss black on there. No primer. It's going to be in the shop. I'm not too worried about it. And here we go. Just getting them installed. And uh, this is the layout I was telling you about. Uh, seeing the end of the end grain there. I was trying to get the those holes uh, in the in the center of the plywood as close as I could. But, you know, and I, there it is right there. And everything, uh, you know, worked out pretty good except for that bottom screw. You know, I drilled in. Of course, when I drilled, I hit screws. Uh, that I had screwed the thing together with, and that took a little bit to get through them, but everything was good. Got them all figured out. And here I am, I'm measuring for the lengths of the legs, um, trying to base everything off of being level, and hopefully, uh, you know, one cut is all I need, and these things are going to fit just the way they should. Let's slide them up there, mark the hole for the pin, get them drilled out. I think I'm using a 3 8 inch drill bit right here. I was drilling and drilling and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't go through. Uh, the table was too low and I was bottoming out the drill press. Once I got that figured out, all good. And here we go. Pin goes in nicely, slides right over and uh, worked out really good. That was a good choice.
So here we are installing it, and I'm pre-drilling it in and just kind of countersinking this, and then three, three inch and a half or two inch uh, drywall screws, and there it is. Not going anywhere, perfectly level. Really happy the way this turned out. And this is the first time I'm dropping the saw in there and uh, you know, just wiggling around. Uh, almost one more time, boom, there it is. Nice and flat, flat with my workbench. Every service is flat. That was a good job. It turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with it. Well, there it is, the DeWalt Portable Table Saw Table. This was a great little project and I want to thank those uh, couple of commenters who commented that uh, I should build a table uh, to accommodate my saw. I took your advice and did it and I'm glad I did. I have what I feel is the perfect location for it and uh, it's going to be working great for future videos. I'd like to explain a couple of things I've got um, here on this particular table that's going to be really uh, work out good for me. One is the fact that the actual table saw itself fits perfectly flush inside the table as well as perfectly flat my existing workbench. This allows me to have a bigger area to run bigger pieces of stock through here. Maybe even a 4x8 sheet of plywood, something that I could never do before with my other saw as that just sat on top of my workbench or on top of my uh, welding table. And I only had this two foot by two foot square area to work with. Now I've got this big area, that's going to be great. The other thing is, is the fence. This fence right here on this particular saw has a wide range. It, it goes as far as this way and all the way over this way and it runs on a track. And so I had to put this groove in the very back right here to accommodate that track which is not going to be in the way of anything that I do. So that worked out really good. Also, um, I put a hole on the side right here and that is where the cord for the saw uh, goes through that hole and plugs into a conveniently close um, outlet that I have right there. And I really like that. No cords in the way of anything. And another thing is I put dust control on here. That's something that I'd never had before. If you guys remember several videos back, I've got dust when I'm cutting everything. And uh, so now I can easily hook up my shaw back to the back of this dust board that I put on here. And that's greatly going to reduce the uh, uh, the dust factor, so I'm excited about that. And also, um, portability. This this table here is only attached to this cleat on the front of my work table here by three screws, three inch and a half drywall screws, and of course the legs that, that it's attached on. And it is not going anywhere. It is perfectly solid. It's not going to move. It's going to allow for a very stable work area as I'm using the saw. And when I'm not using it, I simply remove. First of all, remove the saw, it just lifts right out. And then remove these three screws and these legs that are attached by these pins, and it's out of here and stored probably under my lathe table since that's the only space that I have for this thing. I'm running out of space in my shop right here. So when I want to use it, I can just hook it up. It's just a matter of seconds to get this thing working properly. It's just a matter of seconds to take it down and put it away. Very convenient. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way this turned out and I can't wait to use it in future videos. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.